Okay, what we found by looking at the at the motherboard and matching up where the screw holes need to go, we found that we only needed, to, in addition to these four motherboard standoffs that were already in here, we had to install two more uh, at the top and uh, the front top and kind of in the middle top. We don't have to use any of these uh, screw holes that are back here toward the, well actually toward the front of the case. Uh, this is actually toward the back of the case. Um, but we had to install two up here. So we're going to have a total of six screws that hold the motherboard in place. One thing I didn't mention before that uh, something we need to install before we put the motherboard in is called the back plate, um, motherboard back plate. And let me install this and show you how this works. This is in a little plastic bag here. What this does is this goes in the back of the case so that these connectors for the USB connectors and keyboard connectors and all those sorts of things have a nice tight connection uh, to help keep dust out and to help you control airflow, uh, keep air flowing exactly the way you want it to. And so these usually pop into these little holes here. Let me see if I can get this to pop in the right way. Usually you start from the inside of the case and make sure you don't install it upside down. So you can hold up the motherboard like this and you see that these two USB ports and this um, little round keyboard connector are at the top and those are the same holes there. So you start from the inside of the case and it should just pop in without a whole lot of pressure. But there should be a slight snap to put that in there. And just work your fingers around a couple of times. Don't push it too hard. Okay. Uh, it just snapped at the top. But don't push it too hard because these are pretty flimsy and you can bend them out of shape pretty easily. So try to be kind of, of gentle with them. Instead of installing the motherboard right now, I had a, a change of heart. What we're going to do to make it a little bit easier is first we are going to install the processor and the heat sink for the processor in the motherboard. So what I want to do right now is do an unboxing of the Intel Core i5 processor that we're going to be using and I'll just show you what that comes with and what the purpose is real briefly and then you can watch me install it on the motherboard. It's usually a little easier to install the processor and then put the motherboard in um, so that you don't have to do a lot of this work um, by reaching deep inside the case. So here's our processor. There's a little um, tape here to make sure that it's factory sealed. Slide everything out here. And there are two main things uh, and also a couple of accessories that that come with it. So the two main parts, this is the processor itself, this little piece of metal here. You want to be very careful not to get your greasy fingerprints all over it. I'll show you how to properly handle that and properly install it. And the other main part that you're concerned with is this. This is the heat sink. Now also, don't just start playing with it and get your greasy hands all over it. Right here you see this copper circle and on the copper circle there are three little strips and if you touch them they're going to be a little sticky and gooey so don't touch that. What this substance is that's on that copper is thermal grease or thermal glue. There are a few different terms people use for it. Um, this looks a little stickier so I'll call it thermal glue. What that does is help form a perfect seal between the processor part and, which is on top here, and the heat sink. So let me slide that processor out there. So what we're going to be doing is putting this processor in the computer and we're going to be setting this heat sink on top of it and that th glue will kind of smoosh down and it helps the heat that the processor generates be transferred to this metal and out. So don't don't try to mess with that with your fingers because otherwise it's not going to uh, have a nice seal. So this absorbs the heat 
and then this fan on top here is going to help dissipate that heat so that your processor doesn't get too hot. If your processor gets too hot, uh, your computer will shut down. It'll start having errors and shut down. So, let me show you how to install these processors. It's not too difficult. Now, it used to be in years past that processors had little tiny pins, hundreds of tiny pins sticking out of them. Um, about five or six years ago, Intel decided instead of having pins sticking out of the processor, they were going to have little holes where pins go. So instead of the pins being on the processor, now the pins are on the motherboard where the processor goes. That's why there's this little plastic cap over the uh, socket where the processor goes. So what we do now is there's this little arm right here. This arm is what's going to hold the processor in and there's also another cap there. Let me swing this, so just gently pull this arm out and it'll swing up like this. And there's this little cover, if you see it there. This little metal cover is going to go on top of the processor and help hold it down. This met, uh, plastic cap right here should just pop off. Let's read before we do it. It says, important, install processor first, then remove and keep the cover. So how about we follow instructions? We will remove that cap after we install the processor. Now what you're looking at here are a lot of little teeny tiny pins. Again, don't go poking them with your finger because when you get dirt and grease on them, it's not going to have a good con uh, electrical contact with the processor. But all those little tiny pins are going to meet up with these little tiny holes on the bottom of the processor there. So let's carefully open up this processor. This is a couple of hundred dollars, so we don't want to be too rough with this. Now, one other key. Now, I haven't built one of these in a while. You want to make sure to figure out how the processor actually gets installed. Because it's square, theoretically you could put it this way, this way, this way, or this way. Um, but it only correctly goes in there one way. There's a little silver arrow I don't know if you can zoom into that, on the bottom left of the processor. And again, since it's been a while since I have done this, you used to be able to look at the soccer, not soccer, sorry, socket. We're going to a soccer game tonight, that's why I'm thinking about soccer. Uh, on the socket, there used to be a matching little arrow in one of the corners, and that's how you could tell which way the processor goes in there. And I'm not seeing that arrow here. And so rather than do something stupid, I am guessing that that little arrow goes in this bottom left corner here. But rather than do something dumb and mess it up, I'm actually going to look at the manual for the motherboard real quickly. And the, and the motherboard will have a little um, diagram that shows us where that arrow goes. On some motherboards, what you look for is something that says pin zero, and pin zero is going to be in the same place where that little arrow goes. Let's look in the manual real quick, and we'll find out how that goes.